for the fifth week in a row. A very average week start, but a, a good weekend. Will the trend continue? Well, it's time for your daily dose of hopium. Will Bitcoin never be $3,000 again? First chart analyzer comes from Crypto Tees using the market god indicator. I don't know. Let's just go with it. It's showing a buy indicator for Bitcoin for the first time since August 2016. Now, that's a difficult indicator to please. This also says Litecoin is a buy too. Now, this is not financial advice, by the way. This is purely my opinion and the opinions of others. 24,000 followers, mostly people with tens of thousands of Twitter followers is what I'm going from. More chart analysis from Twitter. Take that for what it's worth. Galaxy with this chart analysis. Going back to the bear market since 2014, which was exacerbated by the closure of Mt. Gox three times, a move higher was rejected. After the third time, a month or two following it, a breakout. Same pattern again. Now, I know what you're thinking. That's some strong hopium gas you're inhaling there. So what if a chart looked similar however many years ago? You could also draw lines right now to make it look like Bitcoin is about to fall another 50%. The thing to keep in mind is that this isn't facts. This is possibilities. It's about as likely as a coin toss, I would say. So if this chart was true, big if, but if, right? New all-time highs for Bitcoin would be seen as early as 2021. And if you're in disbelief, hey, you know what? Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe the market is in disbelief as a whole, huh? Facts are trading volume has been steadily on the rise since January, and we are out for now of a 15-month decline in Bitcoin, the biggest multi-period of decline for Bitcoin in its history. If you're currently waiting for a dip to get into the market, I think that's incredibly reckless. But hey, if that works out for you, if it, if it does work out, you're going to look very smart. So let's look at more fundamental indicators. Tether. We're looking at some interesting correlation here between the amount of Tether, and the price of Bitcoin. Going back to just before November, the big capitulation, the red line is total Tether circulating supply. Blue line, we know all too well Bitcoin price. 30 days before the November 18th Bitcoin capitulation, we saw a huge decline in Tether circulating supply. Correlation between amount of Tether and Bitcoin price seems to get a little bit weak following this, but it's still interesting. Definitely watch out for any surges in the amount of circulating supply for Tether, both up or down. Right now, the total supply seems pretty stable, so maybe we can predict more stability to come for crypto. Let's look at BNB briefly. Now, for me, TA is less important for this coin. In my mind, it's fundamentals that arguably caused it to decouple from Bitcoin and give that meteoric rise. Briefly hit $16 on Sunday, wrecking almost everyone waiting for a dip here. But the news is that Seller ICO is launching tomorrow with arguably very high interest in it. Blockchain 4.0 hype comparable to Sealy or Seal if you've ever heard of that coin only accepts BNB looking to raise $30 million. No idea if they'll hit that. Arguably a drop in the bucket for Binance, $30 million anyway. But I personally may flick a few BNB into it. Looking for a quick flip. Please do your own research. Not financial advice, just my opinion. Anyone hoping for a dip on Binance coin may point to this and say maybe after the fundraising is the time that Binance might drop. But personally, I'm not holding my breath out for that at all especially if the primary pair for seller is going to be BNB token. Moving on to the news, generally, a Barclays Bank analyst is predicting that the Facebook coin that is being launched in the course of the first half of the year will earn the social media giant between 3 billion and 19 billion. Now, that's a huge range to throw a dart at, but fair enough. So I believe Facebook coin is looking to get listed on exchanges. It's looking for the whole nine yards, Bitcoin pairings, use USD pairings, whatever. So assuming then it is going to be between 3 and 19 billion, it could very well be listed on CoinMarketCap or whatever website you use to track cryptos. At the lowest estimates by this Barclays analyst, this would put it in a top five, top six position once listed and at best a number two position. That is going to be some pretty serious publicity. Uh, and it's not just Facebook either. It's also WhatsApp and it's Instagram. So maybe this is going to be used as one of those gateway drugs into the investment world of crypto. And I, for one, welcome all those noobs.
Lastly, we're going to look at some uh, very, very broad news here. When backed, Bitcoin futures market approval appears stuck in limbo. So this article begins by talking about how actually backed's offering of physically delivered futures contracts for Bitcoin should theoretically be easier to approve for the SEC than paper ones because it's less susceptible to price manipulation because even if the price does come down, at least you've got the physical Bitcoins. It's not as big a hit as taking cash instead. Yet here we are, six months later, still no approval. What's going on? Now, I have seen a couple of YouTube videos. I've heard theories that uh, it's all planned. You know, the, the, the institutions that missed out on the train of Bitcoin are now bringing it back into the station, ready to pump it again after they've accumulated. So how would they do that? Well, theoretically, they uh, can manipulate the markets by paying Bitcoin holders to sell, uh, only give governmental approval for things that hurt the overall price of Bitcoin, like futures, paper trading, bad press engine maybe, but etc. etc. Push it down, tame Bitcoin. It's a nice idea that they're now going to uh, send that train on its way, but uh, I think what's more likely is what we've seen. The US government may never approve something that's going to help the price of Bitcoin. I hope I'm wrong about that. I don't really feel strongly about that, but uh, if I had to choose what was more likely, I'd say that probably was. And the reason why is pretty obvious. How many times has Bitcoin ETF been denied? How long has it been since Bax product has been in limbo six months? Still not got regulatory approval, and it might not be a bit of wonder why. So there is a US presidential candidate, Andrew Yang, who is pro-Bitcoin. With the exception of Wyoming and a handful of other states, Wyoming is obvious. It's a, a state full of farmers. Farmers hate bankers. No wonder they like crypto. Blockchain regulation in the US has been disappointing at best. And I'd say at worst, absolutely devastating and crippling. Just look at the fact that most ICOs can't allow US investors and even some exchanges can't allow US citizens to register. Yet there may be a ray of hope from Democratic presidential candidate Andrew Yang. This is probably the strongest dose of hopium you'll get today. The basically, in case you didn't know, this uh, presidential candidate accepts cryptocurrencies. I think maybe just Bitcoin? No, other cryptocurrencies, including Ethereum, uh, to fund his uh, campaign and uh, seemingly has been involved with Bitcoin or at least known about its existence since at least 2013. So he probably holds some Bitcoin, but there's still two major issues with uh, getting excited about this whatsoever. Number one, is he going to get elected? That's a huge long shot. Number two though, even if he, if, even if he was, does he have any power to do anything pro crypto? Would he even do it? Again, probably an even bigger long shot. Are you going long? You like that tie into that question? Or are you waiting for a dip? Let us know. Leave a like if you enjoyed. That's very much appreciated. Uh, my upload schedule might be a bit spotty this week. Finishing up the garage. It's looking pretty good. But hopefully, I will see you again soon.